Alright, welcome to my first music tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching how to play Puff the Magic Dragon on guitar. Um, it's the, one of the first songs that I learned, and I believe it was the first finger-picking song that I learned, and it set me up for um, a lot of harder finger-picking songs down the road. It's a little tricky, but in the long run it's actually a good place to start. So, without further ado, I'm going to be teaching the Peter Paul Mary version, obviously they originated it. And so, I want to go over a couple things before I get close up on the guitar and we actually learn the song. So, I'm using an acoustic guitar, obviously. The song is played, um, well, Paul, Peter's part, which he's the main, which is what I'm going to be teaching. He plays it in the key of G, um, and the original recording has a capo on the second fret, like this. So, we're playing in the key of G with a second fret, so that's the, technically the key of A. Um, at the end of the video, I'm gonna put up a chart that tells you where you put your capo um, to play in a certain key, because if you have a lower voice, you might wanna take the capo off and then just play in G down here. Or if you have a higher voice, like for me, for example, I'm kind of like a tenor, so I prefer to play this song third or fourth fret capo, which this is the key of B now. But just for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna do the original recording which is 2nd fret capo, playing in the key of G. And also, by the way, I'm using a thimble like this. You don't have to, though. It's perfectly okay just to use your fingers. Just because I'm so used to playing finger picking with this, I'm gonna use this, but you don't need to. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna show are the chords that we use. There are six chords that we use in the song, and um, they're repeated throughout the entire song. And so the first chord is our home chord, our G major chord, and you'll notice that I'm playing it like this. Um, of course, we've all learned how to play it like this, um, with our pointer finger hitting the top, or like this, or like this, but that general shape. But there's a reason that I'm playing it like this. And um, in case you aren't familiar with this shape, um, I do have the chart up, but it's just um, ring finger on the low E, uh, third fret, middle finger on the 2nd fret A string, and then my pinky finger on the high E 3rd fret. So that's it. The second chord in the song is the most difficult change and the most difficult chord, but it's worth it. It's a B minor. And again, if you know, it, this is the most difficult chord in the song, especially since you're going from this to that, and that's a very difficult change. Until I learned how to play it fully like this, I just did this. I didn't bar the full 2nd fret here, I just put my pointer finger on the high E string 2nd fret. It doesn't sound as nice, but it still gets the point across, especially if you're singing along. Because you notice if I go... It gets the point across. So maybe until you're fully comfortable with this, you might just want to do this for the time being, but you do want to work on getting the full bar. Because you do like to get that low, that low um, B note in there. So, but anyway, that's our second chord. It's a B minor. Our third chord is going to be a standard C major chord. But in this song, there are moments where we need to hit this third fret high E string, which is a G note. So, you do want to move your pinky onto there. And we'll get, we'll get into the specifics of when this is used, but um, just know it's a C major chord with occasional high E third fret with your pinky. The fourth chord that we use is an E minor, and again, we're going to be hitting this high E third fret with our pinky. Now, I'm using my middle finger and my ring finger here to hit this E minor, however, that is a bit of a stretch, so if it's easier, you might want to use your pointer finger and your middle finger on the E minor, like this. So you can do it either way, because we're going from a G major to this in the song, So, but you can do that. Or you can go, and again we'll get into when those are used, so that's an E minor. Our fifth chord is an A7, and then our sixth and final chord is just our D major. Alright, so now that we know the chords, I'm going to go ahead and go through the song. I'm going to be teaching the right hand finger style um, pattern and stuff like that, along with um, how the left hand is moving with the chords as well. So we'll get um, both done. So if you need to slow down, rewind to see how it's doing, feel free to do that. Any questions, of course, leave them down in the comments below. Uh, I'll answer them if you have any. So, without further ado, let's begin. We're going to start with the intro. 
Um, and the, the, the song is very repetitive in terms of how you play it, so um, there's not a whole lot to cover in terms of just like differentiation. It's very straightforward and similar through the whole song. So we'll begin with our G chord hitting our low E string with our thumb and the high E string with our ring finger together. Then we use our pointer finger, G string, middle finger, B string, ring finger, high E string again, and then pointer finger, G string. So to all together, it goes like this. And I'll turn myself a little bit so you can see. And that pattern is almost the same. The only thing that really changes um, is a couple variations and then where our thumb goes depending on the chord. We always hit the lowest note of the chord. And so since we're on G, uh, G chord, the lowest note is on the low E, so that's why we're hitting our thumb on the low E with the high E um, together like this. So again, one more time, low E string, thumb, high E string together. Pointer finger, G string, middle finger, B string, ring finger, high E string, pointer finger, G string again, like this. Now we move on to the next chord, which is the B minor chord. Again, very difficult. And again, I do have that little trick, and I'll show you how to play it with that trick after this. But I'm going to first do the full bar chord. So with this full bar chord, the lowest note that we are hitting is the second fret A string. So that means when we the first um, thing we're going to do is hit, the, hit our thumb on the A string this time, and then again our ring finger on the high E. And again, we're doing that same little pattern. So after we hit the those two together like this, we go pointer finger, G string, middle finger, B string, high E string, ring finger, pointer finger, G string. Again. And again, it's a difficult transition, but it goes like that. Alright, so real quick I'm going to go over the trick for not doing the full bar chord like this. Um, if you're okay with the full bar chord and you just want to move on, down on the red player, just look for when this ends and we're going back to the main tutorial. But if you do need this shortcut, we're going to go over it real quick. So again, we're not doing the full bar, we're only taking our pointer finger and hitting the um, high E second fret like this. But since we're not hitting the full bar, we're not hitting this A string, so technically the lowest note that we're going to be playing is on the... Um, the D string. So the only difference here is that instead of um, hitting the our thumb on the A string the first time, we're going to hit it on the D string. So um, D string, thumb, high E string, ring finger, pointer finger, G, G string, middle finger, B string, ring finger, high E string, pointer finger, G string again. So it goes. So again. There you go. Okay, so after that B minor chord, we're going to be going to our C chord, and this one is a little unique and um, tricky in terms of we're actually going to be putting our pinky on the high E third fret as we're playing with this pattern. So it takes a little bit of um, coordination with both hands. So we'll get there. So um, with the C uh, with the C chord again, our lowest note is our. Um, third fret A string, so we're going to hit our thumb on the A string first time around, again with our ring finger hitting the high E at the same time. Then we're going to do our the pattern that we've always done. Pointer finger G string, middle finger B string, ring finger high E string, pointer finger G string. Like that. Now, when we put our pinky on the um, high G string, we do it the second time we hit the high E string. So the first time we do it is when we hit it together with the A string, right? Then we do our, we do the pointer finger G, um, middle finger B. But when we hit the high E this time, we want to put our pinky on the third fret high E, so we're hitting the G note, like that. So it goes like this. And then of course after we do that, we hit our uh, point your finger on the G string after that. So. so again, the first time when we hit the A string and the high E together, the first time we're not doing anything on the high E string, we're just playing it open. 
then we do our pointed finger G string, middle finger B string, then when we hit the high E with our ring finger again, we put our pinky on the 3rd fret high E, and then hit the G string with our pointed finger. So again, one more time. And then after we do that, we go back to our G chord and do the same exact thing that we played the first time around. So again, um, since we're doing a G chord, thumb on the low E, ring finger on the high E together, pointer finger G string, middle finger B string, ring finger high E string, pointer finger G string. Then we go back to a C chord after that, and this time for the C chord we're going to keep our pinky on the high E 3rd fret the entire chord. So we just move our hands back up like this, and again keep, your, keep that pinky on that 3rd fret high E the whole time, and we do the same exact pattern that we did with the last C chord. So, um, thumb, high, uh, thumb on the A string, high E, ring, uh, ring finger, pointer finger G string, middle finger B string, ring finger high E string, pointer finger G string. And so there we go. And now we're going to go back to a G chord, and this is when we change up the finger style pattern a little bit. So after we do that second C chord, we go back to G, but this time we hit the um, low E and the high E string together again, uh, thumb on the low E, ring finger on the high E, then we just hit the G string with our pointer finger, that's it. So again from the, G, uh, from the C chord it sounds like this. And then after that we go to our E minor chord. Now remember what I mentioned with the E minor chord that we're keeping our pinky on that high, high E 3rd fret. Um, and this is again a bit of a stretch especially if you're new to guitar. So if you don't want to use your, um, your middle finger and your ring finger, you can just swap it and use your pointer finger and your middle finger instead. And that gives, you, that gives your uh, hand more room to get that pinky onto the 3rd fret like that. So you would just go like that, instead of, either one is totally okay. And again, when we hit that E minor chord, we're going to do the same exact pattern that we did with that last G chord, so when you get to that E minor, low E with your thumb, high E with your ring finger, and then hit the G string with your pointer finger. So from the G chord, it sounds like this. And then next is the A7 chord, and this, for the intro, is a bit of a tricky spot. So if you don't want to do this tricky spot in the intro, you can just do what we're going to do in the verse, and the chorus, which I'll teach you later. And you don't have to do this tricky spot, but I'm going to teach it anyway. So with this, you hit your A7 chord, you're going to hit the A string with your thumb, and the high E string with your ring finger like this. Pointer finger G string, middle finger B string like that, and then after you do that you immediately want to switch to your D chord, so, and then when you switch to that D chord, you want to hit your thumb on the D string immediately, so it goes like this, like this, so again, so after you do that, you're going to want to do uh, your ring finger on the high E, pointer finger on the G string, with that D chord again. Again, ring, high, high E, pointer finger, G string. So together they sound like this. And normal speed. And again, that's a tricky spot, so you definitely want to keep practicing that if you're not getting, but you'll get the hang of it, trust me, I did. And then after you do that, you want to go back to your G chord. And then you're going to do the exact same thing um, that you did with the last G chord, which is just low E, thumb, high E, ring finger together, pointer finger G string. And then after that, a D chord one more time, but this time just the D string with your thumb, the high E string with your ring finger together, pointer finger, G string. And then that's it. So I'm going to take it. Um, from the uh, the G and the E minor, just so you can see how those chords kind of fall together. And 
and then slowly. So that's the intro. I'm going to play the intro twice through, first normal speed, so you can hear how it sounds, and then I'm going to do it slowly so you can kind of just hear exactly what I'm doing. And again, if you have any issues or you want to rewatch something, feel free to go back, look for the chord that I'm playing that you're looking for, and then just rewatch it. If you have any questions, again, feel free to comment. So again, first we're going to go normal speed. That's the intro. Okay, so now that we got the intro out of the way, we're going to go into the verse and the chorus. And the intro is actually the most difficult part with that little tricky um, A7 to D change. That's actually the trickiest part. The verse and the chorus are actually simpler. And the verse and the chorus use the exact same chord progression, and they have the same melody. They're almost the same chord progression played twice. The only difference is when we get to that the A7 and the D part, uh, it changes a little bit. But um, they're relatively the same, and it's very similar to the intro as well. So again, I'm going to teach the chord progression and the thing, but it's exactly the same for the verse and the chorus. So, um, we'll begin with the G chord, the same as the intro. Again, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to explain what we're doing with the right hand every single time. So, um, thumb, low E, ring finger, high E, together, pointer finger, G string, middle finger, B string, Ring finger, high E string, pointer finger, G string. Then we go to that B minor chord again, same thing. Uh, again, with the normal bar. Um, thumb on the A string, ring finger on the high E string together, pointer finger, G string, middle finger, B string, ring finger, high E string, pointer finger, G string. And again, if you're using the shortcut, just uh, same thing except your your thumb at the beginning is going to hit the D string instead of the A string at the beginning. And with the C chord, same thing again. At, when we hit the high E string the second time, we're putting our pinky on the high E string third fret. And again, thumb A string, ring finger high E string, pointer finger G string, ring finger B middle finger B string. Then. When we hit our ring finger on the high E, pinky on the high E, and then pointed finger G string. So we got. And then we go back to our G chord, same thing as the last G chord. Thumb low E, ring finger high E string together, pointed finger G string, middle finger B string, ring finger high E string, pointed finger G string. And then back to the C chord, again, our pinky is held down on that high E the whole time. Thumb A string, pinky uh, high E string together, pointer finger G string, ring, middle finger B string, ring finger high E string, pointer finger G string. Then we go back to the G chord, and this time, again, same as the intro, uh, thumb on the low E string, mid, uh, ring finger on the high E string together. Pointer finger on the G string to get so there we go. Then to the E minor, same pattern. Uh, thumb low E, ring finger high E together. Pointer finger on the G string. And again, if you don't want to do it like this, swap it out for your pointer finger and your middle finger. So you can go same thing or whichever one is better for you. Then. For the first um, time through with the verse, we do the we do an A7 with the same pattern that we've been doing for the rest of the chords. So, we do um, thumb on the A string, ring finger on the high E string together, pointer finger G string, middle finger B string, ring finger high E string, pointer finger G string. So it sounds like this. 
and then we go to our D chord, and again the same pattern, but since we're using a D chord, our thumb is going to be on the D string, um, and then with our ring finger on the high E string again together, pointer finger G string, middle finger G, B string, ring finger high E string, pointer finger G string, so it goes. So again, from that G to the E minor, it sounds like this. Boom. And then, so that's the first time through in the verse, or the chorus. And then the second time around, it's very similar, except when we get to that A7, it changes up a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to go through that whole thing again, just through the second time around. It's the exact same as what we did before. So we get to that E minor again. This time though, the second time around, when we get to that A7, we're just going to hit the A string with our thumb, the high E string with our ring finger together, pointer finger, G string. Then we go to the D chord, hit the D string and the high E string together, again with our thumb on the D and our ring finger on the high E, pointer finger, G string. Then back to the G chord, thumb on the low E, Ring finger and the high E play together, point of finger G string, and then finally back to that D chord, the same thing as last time, thumb on the D string, ring finger on the high E string together, point of finger G string. So all together from the G to the E minor, it sounds like this. And then after that you go back to the beginning and play the first time around. The last thing I'm going to show you is one final little change that they make at the end of the song to end it. So the final chorus is almost exactly the same, there's just a little change. So they do the same progression that I've been doing for the first time around. Again. Okay. Now at the end, instead of doing what we've been normally doing at the second part of the progression, the... We're not going to do that. This time at the end, they just do this. After the G and the E minor, they go... They just do... So, for the A7, we do the same pattern that we've been doing. So, thumb on the A string, ring finger on the high E string together, pointer finger on the G string, middle finger B string, ring finger high E string, pointer finger G string. D, D chord, same thing. Um, thumb on the D string, ring finger on the high E string together, pointer finger G string, middle finger B string. Ring finger, high E string, pointer finger, G string, and then back to G in the same pattern. Uh, thumb on the low E, uh, ring finger on the high E string together, pointer finger, G string, middle finger, B string, ring finger, high E string, pointer finger, G string. And then after that, after we do that, and then we just hit the um, low E and the high E together, same thing, thumb on the low E, ring finger on the high E and then we just strum. So it goes. And that's how you end the song. Um, and then that's, so that's the final variation. So with that we did the intro, we did the verse slash chorus, though they're the same exact guitar part, and then we covered the ending. So I'm gonna play that whole verse chorus progression. Again, first time normal speed, second time slowly, and then that'll cover the entire song. So we'll go normal speed first. And then slowly.
and on a G chord, because we're in the key of G. Now sometimes during live performances, the group, uh, they strum through the chorus. Um, and so you would just be doing the same chords, just strumming, so you know. Right, so um, easier. But anyway, that's all for the entire song. And then so um, with what I just taught you, you'll be able to play from start to finish all the way through. Alright, so thank you for watching my first tutorial. I hope it was helpful and I hope you're able to play this song with practice and things like that. Again, if you have any questions or um, critiques of how I could have made this tutorial better, please feel free to comment down below. Um, and if you have any other tutorials that you'd like me to do, um, request them. But anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.